Hola, cage fighting connoisseurs. This is Kid Nate of BloodyElbow.com, and I'm here with the bathrobe review of UFC 159. We're going to run from the bottom to the top of the card, and I'm going to tell you what I thought about the fights, give them each a, a score on a five-point scale, and, and uh, then talk about some of the implications of the event. All in all, i got to say it was a pretty odd and grisly and disappointing event. Um, I, I, the only thing I can say is it was star-crossed. I think it was the curse of the canceled UFC 151 card coming back to haunt everyone involved, uh, including John Jones, who suffered a grisly broken toe in the course of just uh, steamrolling Chael Sonnen. Sorry to anybody who bet on Chael Sonnen based on my recommendations. I was just thinking out loud there, and obviously... Boy, was I wrong. Shell Sonnen had no chance. When they tied up, it was like a boy and a man. John Jones was so much bigger and stronger. Sonnen could not implement his game at all. And John Jones implemented the Shell Sonnen game plan all the way, forced the clinch, forced the takedowns, and then beat him up on the ground. And when John Jones beats you up on the ground, you stay beat up. It was an ugly beating. But we'll get to that in a minute. Let's start with the Facebook fights. First up, uh, Steven Seiler versus Kurt Hollibaugh. Um Two featherweights, uh, a good fight, one of the better fights on the card, three-round decision. I'd give it three and a half stars, uh, mostly docked because nobody knows who these guys are. Siler, Siler's an uh, ultimate fighter, veteran, and Hollibaugh's a uh, uh, guy with one strike force fight on his resume, came in as a late substitute, tough as nails, back and forth fight, really had everything a good MMA fight uh, can offer except for extremely high skill levels. It had medium skill levels, but fights were relative, and these guys went back and forth and, and really showed their stuff. Good fight. Not so much enough to save the card. The, up next, Cody McKenzie versus Leonard Garcia. I don't know, man. I'll give this three stars, maybe three and a half stars. Cody McKenzie put on a clinic here. Leonard Garcia really, really needs to, to be cut from the UFC. Every time I see this guy in the UFC card, I'm just thinking, you know, there's a talented, young, hardworking featherweight somewhere out there who either uh, never got a UFC shot or only had one or two fights to show what he could do in the UFC. Meanwhile, Leonard Garcia plows on with no discernible skills, uh, no improvement, just taking up space on the roster and, and, and taking opportunities from more deserving fighters. I mean, God bless you, Leonard. You know, he's given us some fun fights, the, the classic against the Korean zombie, but he's had more than his share of luck with the number of decisions that went his way uh, that shouldn't have. And, and last night against Cody McKenzie, he showed he really has nothing left at the UFC level. McKenzie dominated utterly in, um, in a so-so fight. I give it three stars. Um, up next, Brian Caraway and Johnny Bedford. Uh, Caraway totally dominated. Uh, surprised a lot of people who thought Johnny Bedford was just going to beat him up. Um, I'd give it three stars. Nothing special, but not bad. Uh, Caraway did what he had to do. Uh, I, these guys are marginally UFC level, I would say. Two bantamweights. Uh, up next, women's bantamweight, Sarah McMahon and Sheila Gaff. Uh, I give it three stars. Total one side demolition by Sarah McMahon. Um, at first, I was I was uh, afraid she was just going to lay and pray inside Gaff's guard for the entire uh, 15 minutes. But after uh, one stand-up, she managed to cross to uh, side control and then get the crucifix and then just rain down blows. Very good performance from Sarah McMahon. She could be a real threat to Ronda Rousey. And I, I do think that the um, Olympian versus Olympian angle, Rousey being a judoka from the U.S. Olympic team, and Sarah McMahon being a, civil, a bronze medalist, and Sarah McMahon being a silver medalist with the U.S. Uh, women's wrestling team, in the Olympics, I think it makes for a compelling and, and sellable match. So looking forward to that. I think Sarah McMahon probably has to win one more fight uh, to get that title shot. And Rousey obviously has to uh, uh, beat the woman who beat Misha Tate, who I'm now blanking on. And i got to see, who, who is that? Um, Kat Zingano. Sorry, my bad. I apologize to Kat. Um, and to everyone listening, I had to put up with dead air. Up next, then, Ovin St. Preux versus John Volante. This is where the fight card really uh, got stinky and where the jinx really started to hit home. OSP and, and Volante, uh, two strike force veterans. It wasn't a very good fight. It was an extremely tedious and slow-paced fight. Uh, Stand-up, not much going on. No ground fighting at all, no takedown battles. Uh, and then... Um, o OSP poked Volante in the eye. The ref missed it. Uh, asked if he could see. He said, no, I can't see. He stopped the fight. Didn't give him a second to recover. Didn't give him any time to recover. I uh, didn't know that it was uh, it was an eye poke. They they went to the judge's scorecards because he couldn't continue. It was late in the third round, and, and OSP won a, a technical majority. A terrible fight. I, what can you give that but one star? I mean, it was boring and awful, and then, and then it got worse. So I, I'd have to give that a one-star fight. Uh, the McMahon 
the fight, I'd give I'd give four stars. Uh, you see an emerging star coming ab- coming out, so it's good to see that. Up next, Rustam Kavalov and Yancy Medeiros. Um, it was looking to be a pretty interesting fight because Kavalov was trying to implement the suplex game that uh, has brought him to the attention of UFC fans, and Medeiros was doing things to stymie it. Unfortunately, one of those things involved uh, dislocating his own thumb on the come down from a slam. So was grisly and, and totally uh, shattered, visibly shattered, so Damir Aglada had to stop it uh, in the first round. I'd give that one two, two and a half stars, because unfortunately, Dandy, when it was shaping up to be a good fight, and it's disappointing that those uh, two guys uh, didn't get to uh, ha- have more of a chance to show what they could do. Up next, Pat Healy versus Jim Miller. Uh, this is a four, four and a half star fight. Um, excellent fight. Pat Healy really showed that the Strike Force lightweight division is for real, and the, those fighters at the top of the Strike Force lightweight division are definitely competitive with the UFC lightweights, as if Gilbert Melendez and Josh Thompson hadn't already shown that last week at UFC on Fox 7. Pat Healy just came out and you know, Jim Miller did well early on with his aggressiveness and his speed, but Healy's size and his grinding attack uh, just eventually wore Miller down, and by the third round, um, uh, he destroyed him. He, he just wore him down and, 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 and got the rear naked choke. It was a tough fight, tough fight, tough loss for Jim Miller, and, and he's probably uh, seen his peak as a UFC contender, and it's too bad somebody who, who uh, fought at the highest range of the sport but never got that title shot. And I, I don't see it happening in the future. Pat Healy, he might have a title shot in front of him. We'll see. I'll be kind of surprised. I think he's somebody that, that's going to be a very formidable force in the UFC's lightweight division. Though. He's going to definitely be a, a, a serious gatekeeper. Up next, Phil Davis and Vinny Magalies. i got to give this sinker two stars. Uh, Magalies had nothing for Davis. He managed to to uh, get him on the ground a couple times and then didn't do anything with him. Got him a, ca- caught a kick in the first round and took him down and got his back and then made a fatal mistake and let him go. Otherwise, it was Phil Davis uh, taking sparring practice with a heavy bag. Afterwards, people were saying, how can you say Phil Davis doesn't have good striking? And I'm like, look, he, he beat up on an inert, helpless opponent for three rounds and only hurt the guy once. And that was in the first round uh, on a blocked kick and never went back to it. You know, if you hurt a guy with your high kick when he's blocking it, do it again because you're probably going to hurt him again. But Davis was content to point fight and just tee off on a guy who was uh, basically doing nothing other than some leg kicks, uh, low leg kicks that, that, did, that were negligible. And so I just, you know, I see Phil Davis as a contender, but I see somebody that John Jones will absolutely destroy. Uh, so, you know, I look forward to that title fight, but... Uh, not a lot. Uh, up next, Roy Nelson versus Chi Congo. Roy Nelson uh, won a quick, crushing KO. I'll give that. I'll give that three and a half stars, uh, just because I kind of like Roy Nelson. The thing about this, though, and the thing about the whole card is that these are two guys in their mid thirties who both achieved everything they're going to achieve. So when you see two guys fighting that are both in the career descent. There's not a lot of fun in it because one of those guys is going, going, gone, and the other guy is getting a brief lease on life. What what you'd like to see ideally would be Roy Nelson versus Chet Congo fighting new up and comers in the division, guys that can build a name if they get a win, or uh, you know guys that we can learn just aren't aren't that great, uh, you know if they can't get past the gatekeepers. As it is, I think Congo surely should be done in the UFC by now. He's he's uh, shown he can't hang with the top guys and. Roy Nelson gets one more lease on life. He's talking about title shots, and maybe he'll get one. Uh, th- but that's only a testimony to how thin the UFC heavyweight division is. Really, the the light heavyweight and heavyweight division both have uh, just a paucity of talent underneath uh, uh, of young guns coming up. There just are not that many guys coming up in those divisions these days, and it's alarming as a fan of the sport. Up next, Michael Bisping and Alan Belcher in the co-main event. Um, I'll give this one... I'd give it three stars ordinarily, but I'm going to dock it and give it two stars because of the ending. Uh, Bisping outpointed Belcher handily all the way through the fight. Really showed that he's got the, the striking technique uh, to, to, to utterly uh, outpoint and dominate somebody like Belcher. He, he never hit him with just killer power, but he was landing hard shots. And the thing was that then at the end of the fight, he throws a flagrant eye poke. He, he just threw his fist out, his hand out with his fingers extended in a deliberate strike towards Belcher's eye. There's no excuse for that. Either clinch the fist or don't throw it in your opponent's face. If you're throwing fingers at your opponent's face, and it wasn't like Belcher was charging in and was inadvertently caught. Bisping just stuck that hand right there. And this is Belcher, a guy who's had two detached retina surgeries who could go blind, 
uh, and to see him standing there with his right eye bleeding after the eye poke was sickening. Uh, watching Bisping uh, smile and smirk afterwards was sickening. He apologized and said it was an accidental and everything. I don't care. It was just complete bullshit. It was a flagrant foul. It should have been called against him. Instead, uh, Herb Dean called it a technical decision, went to the judges' cards. Bisping won on all three cards, deservedly so. And there you have it, you know, uh, uh, another stinky stun fight. And this is another fight where both guys have, have peaked. They're both on their way down. Bisping just lost a big shot against Vitor Belfort that would have got him a title shot. Alan Belcher just lost to Yushin Akami in a fight that would have got him a title shot. At this point, Belcher, I worry about uh, his, his ability to see more than his career, but he's definitely not going to be getting a UFC title shot. Bisping gets a win, but it's tainted. Uh, personally, there's a bad taste in my mouth. I like the guy even less than before. You know, and I, I don't see him as somebody who's a threat to Anderson Silva in any way, shape, or form, or Chris Weidman, or any Weidman, or anybody else at the top of the division. And now it brings us to the main event: John Jones versus Chael Sonnen. It was very quickly apparent that anybody thinking Chael Sonnen had a chance was a lunatic. And, and I apologize again for for putting that on. I I really was just seeing things that I thought might be there, just just on the chance that Sonnen had a chance. But boy, he had no chance. As soon as they tied up, and it was clear that Jones was just going to ragdoll him all night. And Jones has a kind of ground and pound you just don't get away from. Um, and then you know the fight ends. Great performance from John Jones. It would have been a four-star fight just to see a dominant champion just obliterate somebody. And then his left big toe is utterly is virtually ripped off his foot. Uh, just grisly and awful, and it's going to put him on the injured reserve list for a long time. No idea how long it's going to take him to recover from that. And so now uh, John Jones is, is on the shelf again, and we, we have no idea you know, when he'll be able to defend the title. Guys like Alexander Gustafson and Glover Teixeira, guys like that are just, just out in the cold. You know, And when his last title defense was Vitor Belfort, who didn't deserve a title shot in any way, shape, or form. It's just frustrating and, and shows you uh, what happens when the UFC uh, doesn't do their best in booking fights. Anyway, all in all, it's a snake bit night. Um, I'm going to have to give it two stars and, and just let's put it behind us. It's, it comes at the end of a great month of UFC action. They put on card after card after card of great fights, and then you know they do a stinker. That's what happens when you go to the well one too often. I hope that they uh, just get less ambitious in their scheduling next year uh, because this is, this is a little bit too much. Anyway, thanks for joining us. We'll be back at Bloody Elbow all week. Dallas Winston, Eugene S. Robinson will be back with the 60-Minute Chaos later this week. And as always, watch for the daily MMA from Zombie Prophet and Dallas Winston. Thanks a lot. This is KidNate at BloodyElbow.com. And remember to subscribe to MMA Nation. and You'll get all our videos as soon as we upload them to YouTube.